Good morning everyone, I've got some new toys to show off today. Before we get into things too much though, I do have to make the disclaimer. Whenever I refer to LED bulbs being used in headlights, please note I am only referring to the headlight of an off-road only vehicle. Currently in the United States, LED replacement bulbs for a halogen bulb are explicitly illegal. It does not matter what sort of marketing claim they make. It does not matter what company you buy them from. They are illegal. They are explicitly outlawed in the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration standard FMVSS-108. If you want more information, go look that up and read that. However, with that being said, this Morimoto 2 Stroke 3.0 was developed in Union with SAE standard J3145 which when finished if adopted will make this the first road legal LED headlight bulb. Now before everyone digs out their pitchforks and torches and tries to burn me in the comments and tell me how much of an idiot I am depending on where you are yes it is legal to use an LED brake light turn signal running light any other light on your vehicle but headlights are federally illegal to use LED replacements. If a housing was designed for an LED, that is entirely different as well. If you bought a brand new Jeep Cherokee and it came with the LED housing, that is completely different. That housing was designed for an LED bulb, therefore it is legal. Alright, enough of the legal nonsense, let's get into it a little here. To understand one of the many reasons that this light is substantially better than this Amazon Special in the middle here, we first have to understand how a standard halogen bulb works. So, pull this up close here. You can see there's a little tiny coil of wire in there. There's actually two of them, one in front of the other. That is what actually produces your light. It's a very similar technology to what makes your toaster hot. A very small coil of wire has current passed through it. Electricity moves through it. As it's doing so, there's a lot of resistance. It emits a lot of energy, in this case in the form of light and heat. It's not a very efficient setup. I mean, like I said, this is the same technology that makes a toaster hot. This bulb gets so incredibly hot after use... It, I would not touch one within an hour of the vehicle being on. They are incredibly hot. It's very uncomfortable. Very wasteful when you're talking about energy efficiency. You'll notice on this Amazon LED here, the chips are a very similar size and shape to what the coils of wire were in the halogen. However, if I turn this on its side you'll notice that this is a very, very fat bulb. That might not sound like a very big deal because, I mean, realistically, this is still small. However, whenever it comes out of here and hits the reflector, it's hitting it at a slightly different angle than what this was. It's a slightly different angle than what that reflector was designed for. One degree of difference might not sound like a whole lot, but when you take it 300 feet down the road, it makes a really, really big difference. It's not anywhere near as defined of a hot spot. It's not as sharp of a cutoff line. It's not as safe and effective. You might be replacing a bulb that's twice as bright as the halogen that just came out of your headlight. However, it might actually be performing less effectively. Another thing to note, you'll see this has a reflector cup in it. Again, that's something that the headlight was designed to use. Most bulbs, like this one, do not have that. In the word, that makes the light hit the reflector of the headlight in a very different way than it was designed to. And again, it shoots it in all sorts of directions that it's not supposed to go. It might be up in the eyes of oncoming traffic, but for you trying to light up the road, it's still not nearly as effective which kind of defeats the purpose of upgrading, doesn't it? With all that said, let's move on to the two-stroke 3.0. It's got a reflector cup. Now, admittedly, I will say this is not the same bulb as these. 
this is an H4 bulb, this is an H4 bulb, this is an H7 bulb. However, I have not seen very many other LED H4 bulbs that do have that feature. And that's not exclusive to H4 headlights either. There's a few other sizes that use those. With that being said, yes, we have a reflector cup that's useful. That's what the headlight was designed to be able to use. And it might not look like it on camera, but this chipset is actually incredibly, incredibly thin. From the side, it looks like it is thicker. This aluminum's still pretty wide. But the LED chips are actually recessed back in the aluminum. It is a much, much thinner chipset than what this has. It yields a much, much better beam pattern. It is an almost perfect beam pattern you get with these. Another thing I really like about these, they are clockable. You can adjust these when you put them in a headlight. You typically want the chips to sit at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. If your headlight isn't quite what the factory expected it to be, you can rotate this collar into different positions so that you can accurately aim your bulb and get the most usable light out of it possible. With a lot of Amazon bulbs, that's not really an option. And then my favorite part about this bulb. Heat management is very, very important. If you live in colder climates and you have a halogen bulb, there's a pretty good chance you've never really thought about your headlights freezing over. These get hot enough during regular use, but it's really not a problem. However, if you use a bulb like this, where it's got a fan on the back, because again, heat management is important, you have to keep this cool in order for it to be effective. With the fan on the back though, all that heat's just getting blown straight at the back of the headlight housing not really doing you any good. I myself used to run similar bulbs to these and I had several several problems here in Iowa with my headlights freezing over if it was a little bit colder and we got some rain or freezing fog or sleet or anything like that. It was a massive pain to work with. The Morimoto 2 stroke 3.0 addresses this problem a little differently though. It's got a little bit of a heat sink at the back here yes. However if you look down that throat right there, you will actually see a fan contained in the back of this housing that pulls air in through one of these vents and blows it out, exhausts the heat through the other one. That blasts it straight forward right at the headlight housing, helping to warm it up, helping to prevent it from freezing over and causing you issues. For me personally, that makes a massive difference because, again, freezing headlights is a pain to work with. If you have to stop every 5 miles, every 10 miles, even every 20 miles, it's really not worth it. It's not getting you anywhere faster, any bit safer. With all that said, I do have to say, these are not the brightest bulbs on the market. If you're looking for that, look at something along the lines of the GTR Lighting Ultra 2. That produces about 150% as many lumens as this does. With that being said though, in some cases, this actually makes a brighter beam for you to use going down the road. It's so much more focused that the headlight is able to focus the light that much better and put it in a much more usable spot for a better hot spot for more effective nighttime vision. If you have a reflector, this is absolutely the headlight bulb that I would recommend, again, for off-road use. If you have a projector, this is still a very, very solid option. However, like I was saying before, the GTR Lighting Ultra 2 does produce more lumens, although not quite as focused as this. Depending on your projector, they're very back and forth, which will actually yield better results. Unfortunately, I don't have a housing here today that I can really put these two in and compare them side by side. However, if you go to my Facebook page, Midwest Motor Lights, I do have some older pictures of this bulb. Well, not this exact one, obviously, but 
a two-stroke 3.0 replacing this exact halogen bulb. You can see for yourself the beam pattern that results in the end, how focused it is, how effective it is, how much better of a color it is, and how much brighter it is. That's about all I've got for today. If you've got any lighting questions, leave them down in the comments. Send me a message on Facebook. Do whatever you can. You can try and send smoke signals, but I can't promise I will be able to read them. It's also a little windy today, so I'd recommend waiting a week or so. But the point is, if you have questions, if you need help with your lighting solutions, let me know. I will do what I can to help you. Again, that's about all I got for today. We got a lot of other stuff in the pipeline. We are still working on those taillights. We're just unfortunately stuck waiting on parts. As soon as I have an update, though, I will be sharing it with you. Very cool things will be happening there. I really suggest looking at that when it's done. We'll have a few other videos coming up here hopefully soon. But that's it for now.